Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this 17th Sunday of the year. Jesus today teaches us about prayer, about communication with God. For the times perhaps we don't consciously communicate with God we don't pray. Let's ask the Lord for mercy, forgiveness, but most especially, let's ask for the grace to be able to pray well. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and and the dead, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry which has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city, will you then destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Behold, I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. 
Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again, he spoke to him and said, Suppose 40 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30, 30 there. He said, Behold, I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again but this once. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. On the, On the day, day I, I called, you, you answered, answered me, me, O Lord. Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I praise you. I bow down toward your holy temple. On the day yeah, I called, Lord, you, you answered, answered me, me, O Lord. Lord. I give thanks to your name for your merciful love and your faithfulness. You have exalted your name and your promise over all. On the day I called you, you answered me. You increased the strength of my soul. On the oh, day yeah, I called, you, you answered, answered me, me, O Lord. Lord. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. You give me life, though I walk amid affliction. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. On the On day, day I called, you, you answered me, O Lord. Lord. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will accomplish this for me. O Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. On the, On the day, day I called, called you, you answered, answered me, O Lord. Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with Christ in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, having cancelled the bond which stood against us, which stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You have received the spirit of sonship. In him we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, do not bother me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, 
though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and anyone who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story told of a little girl who was being taught the Our Father by her mother. And every night she would recite the prayer after her mother. And eventually one night she said, no, 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 mommy, I want to pray this prayer alone. Don't give me the words. And so she got through the whole prayer very well. And then came to the last line where she said, deliver us from email. One of my interests and the topic of study that I have engaged in over the years is the impact of technology on our identity and our spirituality. I do like gadgets and I use many of them, but I always wonder what these gadgets do to us, how they affect and maybe even uh, change our spiritual lives, how they impact on relationships, how they change social structures, and whether they really enable us to communicate, or maybe do they disable an authentic communication. And today, the scriptures want us to focus on communication with God, or the word that we use, prayer. We are presented with Abraham, who is pleading the cause of those in Sodom. It's almost like he is a child with no boundaries, begging a parent for what it is that he wants. And then we hear Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. Communicating with God, prayer is something that is very easy to talk about, and many people do talk about prayer. We have tons of books on the topic of prayer, but it seems to me it's something that we, that I, really struggle with at times. And it seems to me today the scriptures offer us a few considerations to help us to develop a way of communicating with God. If we are conscious perhaps of these few things, then maybe it just helps us that little bit more in our struggle to communicate with God. These are the invitations we are asked to consider. The first one is, it seems to me that we need to be in touch with our experience of God. Because the way that we talk to God or communicate with God or pray is rooted in our personal experience of God. We see this both in Abraham and in Jesus. Abraham is begging because he has experienced God as a God of mercy and compassion. If you look at the life of Abraham, he experiences clearly a God of mercy and compassion. And so he's begging is because he is relying on that mercy and compassion of God. Jesus addresses God as Father, because Jesus has an intimate experience of God as the one who is parent to him, as the one who is father. Maybe we're invited to ask ourselves, what 
is my experience of God. The second thing I think we're invited to consider is that prayer is not a deed or an event in the day or a law that we have to fulfill, but it is an invitation into a relationship with God and with others. You know, if I think the law says I have to pray X amount of prayers a day or I have to say the rosary, then we are not praying to communicate with God, to, but rather to fulfill the law, a relationship with God. Both Abraham and Jesus are in a relationship with God. But notice, the relationship with God leads them to relationship with others. Abraham begs for the people of Sodom. Jesus teaches others how to deepen their relationship with God. Notice how the first part of the so-called Our Father, the prayer that we hear today, is about God, and the second part is about our relationships with others. So we might be invited to consider, do I see prayer or communication with God as a way of developing a deeper relationship with God and others. The third thing is something about expectations. Both Abraham and Jesus say something to us about expectation in prayer. Abraham clearly has expectations that God will not punish the people of Sodom, that God will relent for the sake of the just. In the second part of the gospel that we heard today, Jesus addresses some ex expectations as well. When we go to prayer, we go with expectation. It's part of our experience of being human, that we go to something with an expectation. We expect God to answer us. We expect God to respond to our communication. And after all, Jesus does tell us, Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. But notice something a little bit deeper. Prayer is not simply about the fulfillment of what I want. Often, we get so fixed on what we want that we fail to see what God does offer. And I want to say something about that just now. But perhaps we can ask ourselves or we can consider what expectations do I take with me when I enter into prayer? I'm not saying these expectations are bad, but our awareness of them is important in our communication with God. And the fourth consideration links to what I've just said about where our focus is. You see, because our communication with others changes us. When we communicate with others, we learn things and our perspectives and perhaps even our outlook is changed. And it's the same with prayer. It's the transformation of me, the prayer, the one communicating with God that is important and not necessarily the circumstances. So often our prayer is about circumstances and not about self-transformation. Sometimes perhaps we think God is a bit like an auto bank. We stick the card in, we put in the right code, we say the right prayers, the right formulas, and we get the cash. And then we move on. But you see, prayer isn't like that. Because Communicating with God is about changing me, being transformed. Notice that line at the end of the gospel. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Spirit of God is not a spirit 
that necessarily gives us all that we desire, that fulfills all our expectations. Just look at the early church and those early disciples and apostles. It is rather a spirit that changes me, a spirit that transforms me and gives me new eyes to see the same world in a different way. The great Jesuit who was locked up in a concentration camp in, um, just after the, the war, he writes in his book on his experiences called With God in Russia that religion, prayer, and love of God do not change reality. They give it new meaning. Religion, prayer, and love of God do not change reality, but they give it new meaning. Let's ask the Lord today to help us to explore our personal experience of God. See the way that we are being invited into a relationship rather than simply a task. That we wouldn't be afraid to be open about our expectations when we do move towards the Lord in prayer. And finally, that we would allow our prayer to transform us and to change us. Let's today, like be, let's today be like those disciples who say to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us how to communicate with you. Let's make a profession of faith together now as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's now take this opportunity to communicate with God what we desire, asking God to transform us and the world around us through our communication as we bring to the Lord our prayers of intercession. For all of us, followers of Jesus, that we would respond to the invitation of God to communicate intimately with God by giving time and space in our lives to prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those responsible for public order, that they would strive to create a society in which people can enjoy religious freedom, security, and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who are hungry, for those who hunger for food, freedom, acknowledgement, love, healing, and peace, that they may be given their daily bread by the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered to worship, that as we ask forgiveness from God, we are generous in offering forgiveness to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who are hurting or feel excluded, for migrants, refugees, the poor, unemployed, those living with HIV and AIDS, those who have been abused, and for those in the LGBTI community, that they may know God's love 
and concern for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that our communication and communion with God would bring about a transformation within us so that we might see ourselves and others through God's eyes. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that you listen to our prayers. We place them now before you, knowing that you respond as you know best through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for humble himself to share in our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, ask you to receive us and please us up as we offer humble and contrite hearts. And show away our iniquities. Cleanse us from all our sin. Let's pray that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name. For our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ. For by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord Lord God of hosts, heaven and and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in a bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and Bhutti our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The disciples say to Jesus, teach us to pray, and he offers them these words. So let's dare to say them together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer those around us a sign of peace. If you're alone, simply just pray for peace at this time. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.